C. That no one misleads you. The Bible is clear that the last days will be filled with false teachers, deception, mockers, lawlessness, those who love themselves, those who will be unloving and unholy, those without self-control, those who will pretend to know God, yet they are simply whitewashed tombs. There will be no great end times revival, just a great last days deception. Scripture warns that people will creep into their churches unaware. Who are those creeping in and why are they doing it? The church in the last days will be full of compromise, deception, and a lack of discernment. Life clips will contend earnestly for the faith as Jude 3 instructs. Warning, the red light has been turned on. Grab your Bible, it's time to expose the dark. There we go. Got to be on brand. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody say you're getting cut it either way. This is God's process. Cutting is God's process of eliminating what isn't producing fruit. So now to give uh, context on what we're witnessing here and oh believe me i am not playing the full 20 minute episode and we'll call it that it's a show it's not church it's a show so we won't play the whole 20 minute episode of a pastor getting a haircut well i mean it's longer than 20 minutes but that's all that i could stomach so as you know uh michael todd is the lead pastor of transformation church Sadly, he's never been transformed by the real Jesus, just one of his imagination. And as you can hear the crowd, oh, in the beginning, loving it. They love to be entertained. Who else loves to be entertained? <laughs> so here's a new circus. This is a new circus in town. This church disgusts me on all levels. Michael Todd disgusts me on all levels. Their assistants and associates, their worship, all of that. I have already been blocked, banned, don't know, don't care. I chime in every once in a while when they're live and I try to plant seeds, but I am quickly put in. Time out. But anywho, abu. This one here, he's going to be talking about God's cutting process. So instead of just doing a normal message, a biblical message, I guess Michael thought, hey, let me get my hair cut. In place of me just ministering God's word to my sheep. I have no words for this week's RLE. And it's also his way of expanding what is producing fruit. So if you don't embrace God cutting you, you are not actually getting the best out of what you have. Yeah. And one cut is going to cause you pain. Remember the scripture says, anybody who's not producing fruit, he cuts them off and throws them away. Ooh, yeah. Um. I'm going to have to go ahead and sort of disagree with you there. But the people who are producing fruit, he cuts them so that they can have more fruit. What I found out is one cut is full of pain and the other cut is full of promise. An imbecile. What I'm trying to get everybody in this room under the sound of my voice to realize is God in 2024, when you yell by faith, more fruit in my marriage, more fruit in my finances, more fruit in my business, more fruit in my family, he says, let me grab my scissors. <laughs> Are you ready to be cut? 
How about new? The thing that really brought me a lot of peace, because when I was asked that by the Holy Spirit, am I ready to get cut? My answer was no. Because all my life, cut has been associated with something that is either bad, hurtful, painful, or, or an accident that could end deadly. Just when I think you couldn't possibly be any dumber. Uh -uh, don't, don't play with them scissors since you're young. No, 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 no. Don't use that knife. But God said to me, he said, Michael, being put, cut by me is a promise of more fruit. It's weird. The whole thing is weird. He said, so when I start to cut on your life, I'm promising you I'm planning to use you again. Uh, we have sort of a problem here. <laughs> See what? I don't know if anybody ever played on a basketball team. But, but I was one of those on a team that the coach would always ride me harder than he would ride anybody else. And I was like, coach, you don't be telling them that. He says, shut up and run. Coach, they missed the shot too. He said, I'm not talking to them. Coach. Well, I, got I was a crier when I got angry. Like when I got really angry. Do I got any angry? Like when you get like real, the tears just start falling. They thug tears. P believe that. You better believe that. <laughs> but you get so overwhelmed, it's got to come out somewhere. You <laughs> and just. And one day the coach brought me to the side. He said, Michael, the reason that I ride you so hard and I correct you so hard and I talk to you so hard is because I know that you actually have potential to go where none of these other people have potential to go. So if I don't cut you now, you won't be ready when it's time for the competition. You don't have the faintest idea what you're talking about. And I just came to tell somebody that the church has been a bad, done a bad job in this last season. And you want to hear the crazy thing? I know it doesn't feel like it, but we're making progress. Of emphasizing how comfortable serving God would be. Sorry, man. Well, you tried. I need to say this to you, like, just come to God and all your fears and all your tears and he bottles them and he's going to coddle them. And, and we make you feel like when you come to God, then somehow it gets easy. And I just want to let you know that our desire for comfort has made us despise his cut. So unfortunately, I, I just can't take any more of that. Um, I thought the memes would actually break up the stupidity of what we just heard. And this whole entire message, he got a haircut, of course, through the whole thing. But anywho, uh, boo. Mark and avoid Michael Todd. Mark and avoid Transformation Church. This is not a church of today. And notice how Michael always knows where the camera is. He just knows. He doesn't even talk to the people in the seats. He doesn't talk to them. He literally just pans, looks for the camera, puts on his little comical little skit. Yes, that's what Michael does. This is not a church. This is just a disgusting display of apostasy. That's all I have for this week's RLE. Goodbye, friend. Goodbye, pal. Then I ran out. I didn't grab no shoes or nothing, Jesus.